simply because it was probably the most difficult form uh, of our work. And uh, Francisco being Francisco, you know, if you tell him something's difficult and can't be done, he'll be the first to show you a game. That's, that's just kind of a challenge to him. Um, you know, he, he teases me with every show. I never quite know what's going to come. And, uh, you know, but I always know it's going to be a level higher than what came before. And, you know, these magical pieces, I love the fact that we're able to show them at night because, you know, it's, um, it gives it that sort of angelic glow, um, that kind of ethereal quality that, you know, it just, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, you know, and it's, and it's Francisco's sort of magic way of wrapping maybe a story or a message that is sad and tragic and uh, putting a pretty bow on it, if you will, but still without losing the, kind of the serious nature of the work. But you all want to hear from Francisco. Wow. Woo! Here you go, buddy. <laughs> Still living their life. 
the best they can. So that's for that. So on that note, all the frames are done by me. So they are not remade. So all the frames that you can see here have five colors stencil of airbrushing. So I finish the drawing, I said, oh, I'm done with the, the, the drawing. And then I said, oh my god, I have to do the frames. <laughs> the frame take as much as, 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 as long as the, as the, the actual, you know, this, this themselves. So that's important for you guys to understand that I'm, it's no longer, I'm not, you know, like a drawing, it's an, it's an object. So I'm, I'm, I'm embracing everything that takes to make the drawing. So uh, that being said, the only thing that I wanted you guys to understand is that I wanted to give a little bit of retrospective of my work. So all these pieces on the back are either from my collection or for clients that have, you know, collectors that have my, my works. So the earlier piece from that is 2006. So you can see the progression of how my work has shifted or have progressed up to now. So I think it's important for you guys to see as a way of contextualize this new body of work. So that's the show. Obviously, diaspora, if you, know, if you don't know the word, I'm, I'm hoping that you will be familiar with that. Uh, this is not a brand new concept, but, you know, happened with the Jews early on, happened with Africa, now we have a Venezuelan diaspora. So the idea here is that people living in their homeland, forced by the economic situation to, to live somewhere else. So the idea of the show, the premise of the show is that people are living. By not by choice, but by force. So this show represents that nature of that being displaced. So at the same time, I want the show to be overly depressed because we can go there, and I'm not planning to go there. But that's why I think some of the shows and some of the scales that I'm working on are intimate enough that you get into the point that it's, it's about to get depressed, but there's, there's a hope. So I, I I think the show carries that. Um, Anyway, I can go on and on, and I want. I want. So I got to entertain a couple well, of questions, and we'll move forward. One thing, Francisco, can you? It's, it's a very unique medium which you've sort of developed um, over time. Okay. Could you explain so, that? So, um, as I as Bob was mentioning earlier on, I, I used to be a printmaker. I was working with copper and so on, and I get injured. So I started making drawing to facilitate, you know, to alleviate the, the pressure from the from the from the printing. So I started making drawings. And then, you know, after, as I started making drawings, I got enamored with the, the, you know, the, 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 no, the notion of making a drawing. You make a line, you see it, it's, it's, it's just a very refreshing way to do it. And I even a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago, you know, I saw my, my, my son Pablo working with, you know, color pencils. And he's like, oh, wait a minute. You can do that. I was color pencil. And I started to say, you know, I'm going to start doing color pencils. As a way to introduce color. You can see all my, all my, my drawings on the back are pretty kind of... The color has been removed, and that was on purpose, but I won't go into that. So I said, how can I introduce color? So I saw Pablo making the drawings with color pencils, and I said, wait a minute. Not that I was jealous. <laughs> but I said, no, there is some potential here. So I started making color pencils. And so the way that I'm making these color pencils, so this is a first layer of color, you know, with the pencils. I, use, I put a layer of varnish over it. I do more color, another layer of varnish. So it takes seven layers of varnish sandwich between color pencils to get that kind of density within the drawing. So, um, and that's how they are, they are done. So I have no secrets, that's how they are done. So, I, 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 I entertain a couple of questions for anybody that might, might have questions. Francisco, how much time does it take to do a piece like this? Um, uh, obviously at this point in time, this is kind of irrelevant. Because it takes too, everything takes too long, right? <laughs> so uh, when I, you know, when I, so during my, my work day, I have a Thursday day. It's my 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 studio day. I usually will go four, five in the morning, and I will work for 13, 14 hours, and that's it takes that much. I know for that fact. It's hard for me to because when you are you are in, you are in, and time kind of disappears. I mean, the the way that I can tell time that I spend too long on a drawing is that this, this hand starts to cramp up. So I'm holding a pencil and then I say, okay, I'm, the, okay, I'm done, I'm going home. And that hand is still holding the pencil, okay? <laughs> Try to let go. <laughs> so that's it, the, the, I think that. When I reach that point, it's like, I think I need to go home. So, so whatever that is. 14, 15 hours, I don't know. Any other questions? One more, or two more, perhaps. Yes, I do. 
Can you, uh, and maybe you and I just need to talk about this one to one, but your, your piece back there, Broken, right. is so important right. to me just yeah. in terms of everything that it sure. means, in terms of my right. personal background. Tell, tell me what it means. So the, one that, the piece that he's referring to is broken, it's a piece of bread that is being broken in half. So that show it goes back to the, the previous show that, is, that I did about Venezuela, very specific, called, it was called Memory Pearl. So that show, when I was making that piece, I said, I want to have this vision, I want to have that piece. And I did it. And then as soon as I did it, obviously, you know, you have broken bread. That represents many different things. One being, there's not enough food, you have to share your goods, right? But then also there's a lot of religion connotations to it. There is a, a sense of like... So I, I, I grew up Catholic. I'm no longer Catholic, but I grew up Catholic. But they, you, I cannot deny it. That, that broken, that, that beautiful symbol of breaking the bread in that situation was important. So that refers, and, I, and that's a piece that I could have keep it quiet. I just said, I didn't want to make that piece, but I decided to do it because that's, it came that way. So it's a lot of symbolic, there's a lot of religion, there's a lot of cultural association with it. So that's, that's how that piece came about. Thank you. Yeah. Francisco, seeing your work over the years and how it progresses from stage to stage, there's always the seed of the next thing right. amongst right. what is shown contemporarily. Do you have a, a seed that is driving you forward from here? Um, yes, um, and I want to probably elaborate on that because I'm still cooking on that, but the, the idea here, as you know my work, based on what you can see in the context, Every time I you know, embark on this kind of enterprise, I want to be engaged either technically or conceptually. If I feel that my work is, is going doing the same thing, I'll probably quit. So I want to introduce different things, different notions, especially you know, technically and conceptually, to see how can I get... So, so here's my thought. So making artwork, as, as I do, is not fun. Believe me. When I'm sitting on that table, drawing for 14 hours, my butt hurts, my hand hurts, everything hurts. It's not fun. It's not fun. So that idea like, oh, I'm going to make art work. Forget it. Forget it. I'm like an athlete. I'm like a trained athlete. And I, and I tell my students, like, don't feel the art is no different than any other sport. Yes. You, 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 yeah, you work. Uh, this is a, a nice quote. Like, you, you work in the dark to shine in the light. So these drawings are not fun to make. They are not. When I see them, I say, oh, that was fun, <laughs> right? And it's like, well, you know, like any athlete, it's like, oh, I won that trophy. That feels good, but the amount of work that took to that point is a difference. So I want to, people to understand that these things are not fun to make. But once you get them done, you feel, oh my god, I did it! <laughs> so that's an important aspect to it. So I want people to understand that we need to understand ourselves like we are part of they kind of, I, I always, you know, made that kind of analogy with sports. It's a beautiful analogy because they, they make, they put the effort, and we usually don't. Now I'm putting the effort. Now I see, it's like, oh, now that. So all this drawing work in 2019 because I put the effort in the darks, right? So anyway, any one more question and I'll shut. <laughs> one more. I can go on and on, and I want, but one more. What inspired you to do this work? And uh, were you from the beginning an artist like this, or something particularly strong? No, I wasn't. Um, the, I used to make work that was pretty removed from myself, and that's a very safe comfort zone. So you make work, and you are like your work's there. But I got to a point in 2017, maybe, <clears throat> that I said, you know, I need to do something about my country. And I hesitated to do that for the longest time. Because that sometimes can be the easy way out. I'm Venezuelan, I want to draw pineapples. <laughs> don't get me wrong, but I said, I don't want to go to that right away. It's like, how can I, I, I avoided that issue for the longest time until I said, you know what? I think it's time for me to raise my voice. So my inspiration is that, is that, that notion of, I want to I wanna start making the world within and then show you guys. So the, the only thing, this is, and I will show it. After this is done, guys, no more questions. <laughs> so last thought, last thought. This year, for the first time, is the time in which I have spent 23 years 
growing up in Venezuela and 23 years in the States. So this show, and believe me, this show is a very important show for me because this show represents that middle section. I'm in the middle. I'm a Venezuelan citizen and an American citizen. And this show is that. So if those, some of those pieces you know, hit you because you are an American, I'm with you. If these pieces hit you because you are Venezuelan, I'm with you. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>